Uh, heading west from Magdalena, we hit a very important part for me on, on this trip. This is the very large array. Now, I'm well versed in astrophysics, as you can quite imagine. So we're going to go inside and talk to my good friend John Spargo, who's going to show us around and tell us what all of these dishes are all about. Let's go inside. Well, John, thanks for joining us today. This is really exciting for me. And for you folks at home, I really want to give you an opportunity to see just how big these dishes are. How big are they, John? Um, they each weigh 235 tons and are 25 meters in diameter, 82 and a half feet. That's amazing. And there are 27 of these here. What do they do? What do you do with them? Um, this facility is engaged in basic research in astrophysics, so we gather naturally emitted radio waves from celestial sources, process them into images, and uh, scientists use those images to try to figure out what makes the universe tick. Well, and I know one of the people who, made, who helped work on all of this was Carl Sagan, a friend of yours who's probably the leading astronomer in the 20th century, I would say. Um, and along that line, I'm sure you guys probably just had cups of coffee and talked about all kinds of fun stuff. Yeah, um, one of the problems and one of the reasons we have such large dishes is the strength of signals. And Carl and I worked out a uh, uh, deal one time on the back of an envelope over a cup of coffee wherein if you added up all the radio energy collected by all the radio telescopes in the world, since the discovery of radio astronomy in 1932, that energy total is equal to the gravitational potential released when one snowflake hits the ground. Hmm. Well, having some knowledge of astrophysics myself, I think we could probably say that that would almost equate to the amount of energy that a mosquito needs to take off. Right? Exactly. Well, now that we all know that, let's take a ride up and uh, walk up into this antenna and show us what's up there. Okay, Richard. Before we do that, though, I'm going to trade your silly hat for this silly hat. There's nothing I like better, John, than a silly hat. And the only thing I like better than that is a producer who can actually earn his keep today. So Frank, catch the hat. <laughs> well, John just wanted to give you all an opportunity to see once again how big these dishes are from the inside. And this is not something that every visitor gets to do. But there is a great visitor center here. And John, what can the visitors expect to see? In the visitor center, we have a movie about 10, 12 minutes that gives you a little of the history of radio astronomy. We have static displays about the construction of the array and also some of the scientific results that have come from the array. And then there is a walking tour that takes about a half hour. And in fact, you can walk right up next to one of these large antennas and judge for yourself how big they really are. A lot of fun to come out here and see and to find out what we're listening to out in space. That's the very large array. Bring your family out. It's a great trip. And John, thanks so much for showing us around. Quite welcome. Well, we've had a great time the last couple of days here in Socorro visiting everything that there is to see around here, particularly the VLA today. John, it was great having you along with us. Appreciate that. And I just have one more astrophysics question for you for our audience, and that is, can you explain the dimples on this? Well, it's aerodynamics, and 292 is the optimum, but Richard, it's, it's not the equipment. That's what I've always heard. I was hoping you could help me out with that. We're about to tee off and end our session here down in Socorro at one of New Mexico's greatest golf courses, New Mexico Tech. Well, form over function didn't serve me well. Have you ever seen a golf swing this bad? Horrible form on a great golf course. New Mexico Tech's course is an incredible 18-hole layout with lots of challenges and rated as one of the top five public courses in the state. It certainly is one well worth coming back to play again and another great reason to plan a few days stay right here in Socorro.